What if I told you that one of the most influential books ever written on self-improvement and self-development is not written by a theorist, a metaphysicist, or a psychologist, but by a plastic surgeon? Now, this book is called Psycho-Cybernetics, written by Maxwell Maltz, and I have a theory that I'm going to get to later in the video on why I think that this book is actually so influential. I'll also explain why I think that this book might just be the only book that you need to read on personal development if you had to choose only one. But first, a little backstory on what this book actually did for me personally. I first heard about this book when I saw it on the desk of my now business partner, Derek, at our cubicles 10 years ago when we were working together as recruiters. I walked into our sterile, bland office one day and its unusual red and white cover really stood out to me on the desk. I picked it up off the desk and I started paging through it. Little did I know that picking up that book that day would begin a rocket ship of personal development that I was not even ready for. If you've been around my channel for a while, then you know about the glow up at this point, but to sum it up, after reading this book, I had a bit of a moment. Derek, my now business partner and I went from making $14,000 per year at that cube farm to catapulting our income to over six figures per year in only a couple of years. Put simply, this book rescued both of us from cube hell. It put some serious money in our pockets and it really set us on a course over the next decade to start our own business, grow that business to seven figures and start building our dream lives for ourselves. Everything that we dreamt the first time we read this book has come through all of it. I'm going to give you five of the biggest lessons from this book that will start shaping your life in a big way. But first, let's talk about the whole plastic surgeon thing for a second. Dr. Maxwell Maltz, the author of psycho cybernetics was a plastic surgeon by profession. During his professional career, he had the opportunity to observe the before and after of many patients on which he operated. Some of them experienced dramatic, incredible transformations after their operations. It immediately changed their personality. It improved their self image, and they went on to accomplish amazing things that they never saw themselves as capable of doing before their operation. Others, despite having a drastically different appearance, saw no changes at all. They continued to be unhappy with themselves and went on about their lives as if nothing had happened. I think that we've all seen this manifest in the real world. Sometimes people that we see as outwardly handsome or beautiful don't carry themselves that way. Other people that we see as initially average looking seem to light up every room that they walk into. They overflow with self-confidence and energy and good things just seem to somehow happen to them. So what can we learn from this? That's really what this entire book is all about and what I'm going to explore in this video. Before we jump into that though, my channel is all about health, wealth, and personal development. So if those topics are relevant to you, why not drop a subscribe to the channel? I've got some amazing content coming up in the next couple of months that I think you're really going to enjoy. And and if you feel like I deliver on my goal of helping you grow in this video, why not drop a like and a comment and let me know a thing or two that you learned. Here are five lessons from psycho cybernetics that will change your life for the better. Lesson number one is self image is pivotal. A central idea from psycho cybernetics is that self image is really pivotal and greatly influences our ability to achieve success or happiness. A positive self image on its own can lead to amazing outcomes. On the other side, negative self image can lead to fear and unhappiness. This is really highlighted by the experience that Maltz talks about in his books. Some people who had the ability to cultivate a positive self image following their surgery go on to achieve great things, whereas those that did not achieve nothing. A quote from the book that really stuck with me is our self image strongly held essentially determines what we become. At the time of the writing of this book, this was really a new concept, but I think today with as far as self development has come, we're all familiar with the concepts of manifestation. If we believe that we can, we can. If we believe that we can't, we can't. Here's how you can make use of this concept in your own life. If you aren't where you want to be today, you might have a lot of work ahead of you. Instead of aiming for the stars day one, start with tiny wins. Set a small list of tasks that you're going to do and then go and actually do them. As you start building trust with yourself by accomplishing the things that you say that you're going to do, you'll also start proving to yourself that you're the type of person that gets things done and does what they say that they're going to do as well. Over time, this has been proven to improve your self image or confidence. Confidence comes from doing the things that we say that we are going to do, doing them well and getting those things done. Another great way that you can achieve this is through affirmation. Affirmations. In his book, Maltz talks about creating positive affirmations that can combat negative self-talk or limiting beliefs, which we'll talk about a little bit later. By consistently repeating things like, I can do this, I have what it takes, I'm going to get this done, we can overwrite these self-limiting beliefs that we have with empowering thoughts and improve our self-image and thus the results that we see in life. The second lesson is the power of visualization. Another concept that Maltz spends significant time on in the book is the concept of visualization and mental rehearsal. He suggests in the book that by imagining positive 
positive outcomes and success, we can condition our minds for this, as the mind cannot distinguish between real and imagined scenarios. To take a quote directly from the book, imagination is the workshop wherein we fashion the purposes of our brain and the ideas of our mind. This sounds an awful lot like a direct quote from Michael Jordan, which says, you have to expect things of yourself before you do them. I visualize things in my mind before I have to do them. It's like having a mental rehearsal. If I haven't done it in my mind, then I won't be able to do it on the court. I don't know, but it sounds like MJ might have read this book, and he's not the only one. Michael Phelps, Kobe Bryant, Tom Brady, Usain Bolt, Serena Williams, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and many other elite athletes have all talked about the power of manifestation and seeing success before they enter a game. To harness the power of this in your own life, the next time that you have a stressful task, an event, or maybe an important game, visualize positive outcomes beforehand. Meditate and think deeply about things going well. Imagine the end, a successful outcome. Imagine holding the trophy in your hand. Imagine the A being handed to you on your exam paper in class. Just watch the magic unfold. The third lesson is the mind is a goal-seeking mechanism. Psycho-Cybernetics is a pretty odd title for a self-help book, but here's where we actually begin to understand the meaning. Cybernetics has many definitions and meanings. However, one that stands out to me comes from the actual Greek word for steering a ship. Kybernetes, meaning helmsperson. I'm probably not pronouncing that correctly, by the way. In steering a ship, a helmsperson adjusts their steering in continual response to the effect it observes. Wind, waves, and other factors affect the course of the ship. They're rocking it back and forth. But in a continuous feedback loop, the helmsperson keeps that ship on course, moving it closer and closer to the destination before it arrives. Maltz uses this cybernetic mechanism, an automatic goal-seeking system, as a comparison for the mind. All your actions, feelings, behavior, even your abilities are always consistent with this self-image. This implies that the mind operates like a goal-seeking mechanism, and there's so much on this in the book, I would highly recommend that you read this. But in short, the mind is always going to move closer to goals that are set by the individual. If you set positive and well-defined goals, your mind will take you there. A great way to take advantage of this in your own life is a concept that Maltz talks about called goal cards. Writing goals on cards every day and reviewing them like flashcards every single day will condition your mind to start seeking and continually move towards those goals that you have for yourself. The fourth lesson in the book is the importance of positive thinking. What if I told you that your mind not only has the ability to control how your body operates, but it also has the ability to cure illness and more? While this is a central concept that Maltz talks about in his book, he's absolutely not the only one. This is a concept that Dr. Joe Dispenza, a contemporary writer who has a lot of works coming out, talks about in his book, You Are the Placebo. I highly recommend that you read that as well if you haven't already. Positive thinking directly shapes our experiences and our outcomes. We can see this manifest physically with the way that our nervous system reacts to different things that we think. A quote from the book that illustrates this is, our nervous system reacts appropriately to what we think or imagine to be true. Nothing shows us more than the proven concept of fight versus flight. If we're scared, our body rushes with adrenaline and cortisol. This is a nervous nervous system response to that fear thought that we have in our mind. These stress hormones elevate our senses. The same thing is true if we think that we see a wolf, but it actually turns out to be a dog. Our body's initial reaction is the same. Oh God, that's a wolf, I'm in danger. So the same can be true for different things and other types of thoughts that we have. If we think about failure, our nervous system is going to react to those negative thoughts and operate in a negative manner. The same can be used to benefit us though. Positive thoughts send signals to our nervous system that are conducive of success and happiness. However, on the other side of the coin though, if we think negatively, our mind will send signals to our nervous system that will inhibit success. In his book, Maltz simply explains that if we have positive thought patterns, we'll have a positive internal dialogue, which will encourage our nervous system to bring us closer to our goals. The fifth lesson is we need to overcome limiting beliefs, and he does a really good job in the book of explaining how we can do this. Just like our mind has the ability to create our dream life as we've been talking about in this video, our mind is also jam-packed with limiting beliefs that have been pushed on us by society and past experiences. Things like, I'm not good at math, I'm not good at drawing, because we tried them one time as a child, these limiting beliefs follow us around for the rest of our lives. Oftentimes, we don't even realize that we're putting these limitations on ourselves. If you believe that you're bad at something, you will be, regardless of your actual skill level. In my life, I've had some pretty incredible limiting beliefs that I put on myself, and I consider myself pretty lucky that I've overcome them. It was only after reading this book that I really cultivated self-awareness to the point that I could be aware of these things and begin to do something about them. Now, today, I'm more financially successful than I ever thought that I ever could be. I've pushed through every ceiling that I ever put on myself, and I continue to do so. I've not only grown beyond my wildest career expectations, I'm an entrepreneur running a seven-figure agency and other high-earning businesses. I'm engaged to 
somebody who's the most beautiful person that I've ever met both inside and out. To quickly go back to my theory though, at the start of the video on why I think that this is the most impactful self-improvement book and possibly the one that has really shaped the whole self-improvement niche to date, I think it's pretty easy to see that the concepts from this book, psycho -Cybernetics, have really become the building blocks of the contemporary self-improvement niche. Things like visualization, manifestation, while practiced in dogma in ancient societies for a really long time, really only became a part of the self-improvement dialogue in Western civilization in the last 60 or so years. Maltz was really the first person to really practically synthesize these ideas into terms that people could really understand and start taking action with. To sum it up, if a plastic surgeon can write one of the most prolific and influential self-improvement books of contemporary culture, you can do whatever you want in this life. I hope that you found this valuable. Make sure to drop a subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And a great video to watch after this one would be five other books that I recommend reading this year that just might change your life. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.